So today I figured I'd do a little bit of a different video. Today I am going to do Penelope's birth story. If you didn't know, I have a three-year-old daughter, Penelope, and I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant with my second one, a little boy. Um, and his appointments are going to start to be kind of like specialty appointments because of what happened with her. So I figured I should clue you guys in on that before I bring you along for those appointments. Um, so if you're interested in Penny's birth story, keep watching. So I took, <laughs> I took some notes so I didn't forget anything. And I have my coffee because I feel like we could be here for a minute because it's a little bit of a lengthy story. And yeah, so grab yourself a coffee if you want and let's get into it. Penelope was born February of 2018. So I'll start... I feel like I was probably around 30-ish weeks and my belly was just measuring like a little, they would tell me it was the smaller side of normal. So they just kind of kept an eye on it because it was still in normal range, even though it was on the smaller side. Um, and then come my 37, my 37 week appointment, um, it was measuring too small. It wasn't in the normal range anymore. It was too small. So she sent me for an ultrasound and that ultrasound ended up falling on my like 30, I was 38 weeks or maybe the day before I was 38 weeks. And we were in the ultrasound and if you have had an ultrasound for a baby before, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you can see like little numbers on the side of the screen when they like measure each part of the baby that say like how many weeks it's measuring at and so they would measure her head and then her femur and her this and the weeks that were popping up I was 38 weeks and it was popping up that she was measuring around like 34 or 35 weeks and I saw that and I was like oh that can't be right so ultrasound tech obviously can't really say anything because that's not their job the um is it a radiologist I think has to look at it and then they'll tell you or your doctor will tell you what they said. So we leave the ultrasound and not even five minutes after we left the ultrasound, I get a phone call from <clears throat> the hospital and I see that it was the hospital and I looked at Alex and I was like, uh, why are they already calling? So I answer the phone and it's one of my doctors and she's like, Okay, so she's measuring a little small, and when that happens, we usually like to get them out because something is obviously not going right. I'll explain that a little more in a second. She was like, you ready to have a baby? And I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so <clears throat> it was, our ultrasound was in the morning. So she was like, take your time, like go home, make sure you have all your stuff have something to eat and then come in. So I was driving too, which made it even harder. So I had to like pull into some random parking lot and freak out for a second. And so we called everybody because I was supposed to go into work that day. I was supposed to coach later that night. So I had to call the salon. I had to call um, the gym. And I was like, sorry, can't come in. Having a baby. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I called all our parents and all that. We went home. I had my stuff packed already because I was 38 weeks and <clears throat> made sure we have everything. And we went to Olive Garden. Alex doesn't like Olive Garden. So I figured I would take advantage of the opportunity and go somewhere that I really like because I got to pick, obviously. And so we went to Olive Garden and then we went to the hospital. We probably got there around like four o'clock. And they just kind of checked us in and we got comfy and then my mom got there and we were just kind of hanging out and they, the doctor came in and she was like, she explained kind of why we were doing what we were doing. So basically what Penny had is IUGR, which is intrauterine growth restriction. They don't really know what causes it or exactly what isn't communicating correctly or at least in my case they didn't 
So it's basically like something between the placenta and her just wasn't communicating and she wasn't growing. Like her organs were all, like when she was born, she didn't need any NICU time. She was just tiny. Like everything was fully developed, fully functioning. She was just teeny tiny. So she wasn't getting the nutrients that she needed to just grow bigger. So when that happens, they like to take them out because then you can be in control of the nutrients that they're getting. So we were like, okay, we'll just do what you say. <laughs> so we get all checked in, we get all settled. They started monitoring me and they got like the IV all set and all that good stuff. And then ah, Cervidil, <laughs> that's what they did first. So that night at like six, six or seven it must have been six because it was every 12 hours at first at six they put in cervidil which is a little pill that they put in there that's supposed to just soften your cervix because I wasn't dilated at all I wasn't effaced at all like nothing no signs of anything were gonna happen soon on its own so they did that and then they just let us hang out and they monitored me for the first night and like I said, 12 hours later, they were going to put in another one. So they had to wake me up at like 536 and <clears throat> they put in another one, gave me a couple more hours and then they started Pitocin. I would say at like eight-ish in the morning and they started really low and they kind of up it. I think in my case, it was every hour-ish. I could be wrong. I don't really remember. <laughs> um... So they started that and they were like, why don't you get up and walk around? We can get you like the yoga ball if you want. And so we just kind of walked around like the labor and delivery unit, just strolling around. It wasn't the easiest thing to do because I was GBS positive. So I did have to have like an IV, the antibiotics the whole time. So I had to like walk around with that, but it was okay. And so we just kind of walked around and walked around and later on in the day, probably like early afternoon, they came in and checked me and I was only maybe a one at that point. And they're like, that's all right. Like, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. So I have seen other people's videos where once they started the induction process, they couldn't eat anything, but luckily I was able to eat. So we got to have lunch and we got to have dinner and all this stuff and Luckily, my hospital has pretty decent food, so that wasn't too bad. So we just kind of hung out, and they might have checked me another time, and I hadn't really made any progressions. I was having, like, teeny tiny little contractions that I could maybe feel like, oh, that was interesting kind of feeling. Nothing that was painful. And I think one time the first day, so Thursday, because we went in on Wednesday, February, Valentine's Day, <laughs> February 14th. So then now we're on Thursday. They might have checked me one more time and I hadn't really made any progress. So I think overnight they kind of like weaned the Pitocin down and then they never took me off of it the first uh, Thursday night, but they kind of weaned it down and then they were going to push it back up Friday. So they did that. We just went to bed Thursday night and things were fine. Oh, I think what I was saying is maybe one time on Thursday, her heart rate dropped, even with just like the teeny little contractions I was having. She wasn't quite responding super well. They weren't like, oh my gosh, yet, but they were paying closer attention. So come Friday morning, they start the Pitocin again. I don't think they were giving me any more Cervidil at this point. They start the Pitocin again and they're bumping it back up and... I think I was feeling like a little bit more contractions, but nothing super crazy. Again, I we walked around, we went on the yoga ball, and they must have checked me twice on Friday. They checked me once, maybe like early afternoon, and I had gotten to like a two. And then when they checked me again later on, like that early evening, I was still at a two. So now we're at like almost 48 hours of this process. And like, I was so swollen. I was so puffy. I had been pumped with so much stuff at this point. Like I was just expecting it to go faster, I guess. I don't know what I was expecting, 
but I wasn't expecting for my body to do nothing. And they were like, all right, well, let's take you off the Pitocin and see if you keep contracting on your own. And so <clears throat> up until that point, Penny's heart rate, I think, had dropped again, a maybe like one or two times, still just with those small contractions that I was having. <clears throat> they were like, so we're paying attention to that. We're going to take you off the Pitocin to see if... <clears throat> you're going to contract on your own. So they take me off the Pitocin and this must have been like right before dinner time or something. They take me off it and like almost immediately everything stopped happening and I was having no contractions on my own. Obviously I wasn't progressing any further. I would say like seven or eight in comes my doctor and I was like, oh gosh. And I think a few hours earlier I had like totally broken down into tears when they told me I was still only at a two. And I was like, just why isn't my body doing anything? What's wrong with me? That, oh, you know, if you've been in this situation before, you know the exact feeling of what the heck is wrong with me? Why isn't my body doing what it's supposed to do? So in comes my doctor and he's like, so you're not contracting on your own. And she wasn't liking the small contractions that you were having. So we have a couple of options. He was like, we can leave you off Pitocin for the night and start over again tomorrow. Basically start from scratch in the morning, start the Pitocin, maybe do the Cervidil again. Just totally start over. And he's like, and that with that, we would be risking an emergency C-section because she is not liking what we've already been doing. Or we can go now calmly, collectively and do a C-section now and get her out safely and not have to worry about rushing, being in an emergency situation. Because once they took me off the Pitocin and I stopped contracting, she was obviously doing okay because what she didn't like wasn't happening anymore. So they didn't even have to leave the room. I looked at Alex and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I looked back at him and we were like, all right, we're doing the C-section, that's fine. He was like, okay, I'll call everybody up. And like, like he said, there was no rush. So it was like so calm. And we were just like letting everybody know. And at that point at the hospital, it's still like Friday night. I think my mom, my mother-in-law, I think just them two were there. But then my aunt, I think it might've just been them. Yeah, there at the hospital once they found out that we were gonna have a C-section. So we start getting ready and I like put the gown on and all that stuff and they let me walk myself down there and we just waited and we were all cool and calm and I, ha I did have to go in at first on my own for them to put the spinal in. I had to do that without Alex, which was not fun. That was probably my least favorite part of the C-section. I remember I was like sitting hunched over for them to do it. And I think he had already done the numbing stuff and he was starting <laughs> to put the actual spinal in. And they were like, honey, are you okay? Don't forget to breathe. Cause I was like not breathing. I was turning bright red and I was like, oh yeah, oxygen, important. So they lay me down, they get me all ready, and then they let Alex come in. And, I mean, the C-section was, like, totally cool. Like, everything went great. And they took her out. And I didn't see her right away, because obviously she's behind the thing. But Alex said she was just, like, so coated in, what is it called? I think it's called Vernix. She was so coated in it. He was, like, she looked like a ghost. She was so white. So they cleaned her off a little bit <clears throat> and they brought her right to my chest, which is nice. I know that doesn't happen sometimes with C-sections. So I think I'm pretty lucky. And they let her hang out there for a second. And then they brought her over to make sure, cause she was so little that everything was okay and everything was good. Her blood sugar was just a little bit low. <clears throat> so they stayed in the room with, in the operating room with me for a little bit, and then they moved Alex and Penny to my recovery room. 
And then once I was ready, they brought me to my recovery room and we kind of hung out there for a little bit, uh, just us three. And um, after a little bit, I think, I don't remember how long like the three of us were in the recovery room. But after a little while, they let Alex bring Penny up to our room. And I remember being like, oh, man, like, I'm going to miss everybody seeing her for the first time. Like, that sucks. Because for some reason, my spinal was taking longer to wear off. They never really said anything about it. But all they said was, oh, this is taking longer than usual. But once I was good and I passed whatever test they were waiting for me to go back up to the room they wheeled me up there and I remember going into the room and I was like kind of sad because I thought I missed that big moment and it was just Alex and Penny sitting in the room and I was like oh you didn't do it without me thank you like he was like why why would I do that I was like I don't know so they got me all situated in my room and at this point it was like she was born at 10 01 p.m and at this point it was like one in the morning <laughs> So my family had been waiting for so long and we obviously like couldn't really update them. Alex, I think had sent them one picture right after she had been cleaned off. And so they wrap her up. They had to like double swaddle her. She looked like a little, I don't even know what, but they like put it over her head and like had it right here. So her tiny little face was sticking right out and they did weigh her before everybody came in because we wanted to know so we could tell people how small she was because even my doctor was like yeah she'll probably be like around five maybe towards six pounds and so we're holding her like she's here in my arms and my family comes in from this direction and they're like oh where is she and I was like and they're like oh my gosh I didn't even think that was a real baby she was so tiny and they're like how much does she weigh she weighed four pounds 14 ounces she was a teeny tiny little nugget and that's basically it she was good to go she had the low blood sugar she's sitting right there <laughs> she had the low blood sugar so she did have to be on formula at first because i would say for like the first at least 24 hours if not more her blood sugar was too low to just have breast milk. They were having me like save the colostrum and all that stuff to try and give that to her like with the formula. But yeah, so the only problem she had was keeping her extra warm because she was she had no nothing to keep her warm and the low blood sugar. But other than that, she was good to go. We so she was born 1001 Friday night. And we stayed there Saturday, we stayed there Sunday, and then we were allowed to go home Monday afternoon. So we were there for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, six days. It was a long time. I was ready to go home. But it all ended up being fine. She's good now. I mean, she's still a peanut, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so now for this pregnancy, they're just kind of, we're at a different hospital, but that's just for kind of VBAC preferences. But um, we're at a different hospital, so they're just kind of keeping a little bit closer of an eye on it. Like if my belly starts measuring small, cause I'm 25 weeks and at this point I was still measuring okay. So they're just kind of keeping a closer eye on it. And at 32 weeks, they'll do an extra ultrasound. If he happens to be measuring small, they'll just know earlier. And yeah, so that is Penny's birth story. That has what's led us to here and what we're doing with this little guy. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or I left anything out or something you couldn't follow, I probably was like bow, 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 all over the place. Um, definitely comment down below. If there's any other baby content that you really want to see, definitely let me know. I'm super excited to film all of that. I have some baby video ideas and stuff like that, but definitely let me know what you want to see. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.